Senator Cory Booker is the latest Democratic candidate to suspend his bid for the White House. The New Jersey senator made the announcement just moments ago. He was one of only two African-American candidates still in the race. CBSN political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns is joining us on the telephone. And CBS News 2020 campaign reporter Jack Terman is in Des Moines, Iowa. So, Caitlin, to you first, uh, why is Senator Booker choosing this moment to drop out? Hi there, and apologies for some background noise. I'm on my way to Iowa as we speak, actually. Uh, but the Booker campaign news comes as he uh, did not make the debate stage for the debate tomorrow night. And in his note to uh, supporters, he said that, you know, he ran as a uniter and a healer, but uh, we've reached the point, he says in the memo, where we need more money to scale up and to continue building a campaign that can win. Money that is harder to raise, having been blocked from the next debate and with the urgent business of impeachment rightly keeping me in Washington. So that's kind of the reason the campaign is giving uh, for the senator from New Jersey. First, that it's really difficult to have some momentum uh, heading into Iowa in these next couple of weeks. If you're not on that debate stage, if you don't have ways to really connect with people and raise more money and kind of knowing that the next few weeks are going to be taken up by impeachment, which is going to have the senator off the campaign trail in Iowa and back in Washington at a really critical time. Well, I got to tell you, I feel like Cory Booker was probably one of the most sort of positive sounding and enthusiastic candidates, <laughs> even as he wasn't polling sort of in the top four. He always sort of seemed very uh, optimistic. So, Jack, you know, you've been with the uh, campaign. Can we talk about some of his signature issues um, that, uh, you know, he was a real sort of mouthpiece for? Yeah, that's right. He really pushed and was a leading voice on gun violence. Uh, safety and gun violence prevention in the race. In May, he released his gun violence prevention plan, and it was basically a gun licensing plan. And his argument was, if you need a license to drive a car, you need to have a license to own a gun. And another issue that he really touted on the campaign trail was criminal justice reform. Uh, he noted that in a very hyper-polarized, partisan time in Washington, that he was a leading force on the First Step Act in in the Senate and in Congress, which President Trump did sign into law. So he really led the field, uh, especially on those two issues on the trail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Caitlin, uh, for supporters of Senator Booker, is there another candidate in this race that best mirrors his priorities and might be able to pick up some new voters here? Who benefits? Right. Well, given that the senator really didn't have a huge base of support, we saw that in polling, it's kind of difficult to tell where these supporters will go. But I'll note a couple of things. First, whoever uh, Senator Booker endorses will be, um, you know, that would be a really key endorsement because he is a real um, active force on the campaign trail when we've seen a campaign for other candidates. It's also significant that, um, you know, this is a uh, 2020 field that is becoming significantly less diverse. When you look at the debate stage tomorrow night, it is all white candidates on that stage, and the top-tier contenders of this race are all white. And now, with Cory Booker exiting the race, there is no African-American candidate um, in, in the running at this point. Um, Jack mentioned a lot of the issues that he talked about as well, and you can expect uh, that to, to continue. Um, and Cory Booker, you know, it's interesting to think about some of these candidates who have uh, gone after Joe Biden and kind of thinking about Julian Castro, who dropped out recently. Uh, you had Kamala Harris. Cory Booker was very critical of Biden uh, earlier in the campaign um, and then kind of backed off of it. But it just goes to show um, that those kinds of, of criticisms of Biden, who is considered still uh, the front runner for the nomination at this point, um, really kind of backfired. Um, this is a a time where we're seeing the, the candidates become more aggressive with one another. We're seeing Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren go after each other a little bit in the final stretch before Iowa. Um, and, you know, Cory Booker is someone who really campaigned as someone who wanted to be, you know, campaigned on this message of love and unity. Um, and it's not clear if that's um, uh, something that is resonating 
with a electorate, Democratic electorate, that really just wants to take on Donald Trump. So, Jack, I do want to ask you about that because, you know, here you have Cory Booker. You seem to have a pretty strong social media game. I know that Elizabeth Warren always brags about herself, her selfies, but, man, I think Cory Booker could almost rival her, could compete. He was really good with the selfies. Um, a great speaker, a lot of enthusiasm. Um, there was definitely a call for the Democratic candidates to reflect the Democratic voters, mm -hmm. more diversity. So here we have a diverse candidate who's proven himself um, certainly in, in Newark and now, you know, in the Senate. What happened? Why wasn't his message enough for Democratic voters? Well, that, that, that's right. That's the big question uh, that a lot of, I guess, pundits would argue is like, why hasn't Cory Booker's campaign really taken off yet? He has consistently polled in the single digits mm. uh, throughout the election cycle. His fundraising numbers have lagged um, behind some of his other competitors. And that's something, too, that I would note as well in terms of fundraising. He, in, in right before the third quarter ended, uh, he basically, his campaign manager sent out a memo detailing that we need to hit this fundraising goal in 10 days in order to keep uh, the pathway to victory possible. Yeah. Uh, he hit that goal. But he's been, Senator Booker has been very clear from that time forward that he's not in this presidential race as a vanity project. He's, he's been very clear that he's in it to win it. Mm. He, and if he doesn't see the pathway forward, he will drop out of the race. And that's something he noted in an email to supporters just now, that he does not see that pathway to victory right now at this moment. Mm. Um, so, Caitlin, you know, you know, in addition to running for president, of course, Cory Booker is a New Jersey senator. But I wonder, you know, um, it's, it's sort of striking to me that, as Emory pointed out, there was an attempt to mirror the diversity that exists in the Democratic Party uh, by the DNC. And so I wonder what the path was, the, how the path was illuminated for candidates like Cory Booker, like Julian Castro, like Kamala Harris. What was the impetus for them saying, you know what, there is a path to the presidency for me because we talk a lot about diversity. We talk a lot about uh, having representation much in the same way that Democratic voters looks like. But at the end of the day, it's not really working out that way. And, you know, we're now looking at a, a group of, of candidates running that looks uh, unlike what we saw in the early stages of the campaign. Yeah, that's right. After the 2018 midterms, uh, you really saw the fuel behind women candidates and uh, African-American candidates and black candidates because uh, we saw that the black voters in 2018 were really uh, fueling the base of the Democratic Party. We saw the turnout in the midterms. And there was a lot of thought that that could be reflected in the presidential race as well. But when you look at the polling, and again, polling is all that we have right now at this point because voters have not weighed in. They will uh, just in a couple of weeks. But we're seeing that um, candidates like Joe Biden are getting uh, support among the more diverse group of of uh, Democratic voters at this point. So there is this question about um, representation versus uh, this kind of what electability or perceived electability uh, looks like among Democratic voters. In other words, uh, we're seeing that um, African-American voters, Latino voters are not um, necessarily supporting uh, black and Latino candidates. Instead, we're seeing candidates like Joe Biden uh, getting those supporters. So this is something that candidates like Julian Castro and Cory Booker have been really vocal about um, kind of having this conversation. So when we talk about kind of the next steps for Booker at this point, too, and he will be running for re-election to the Senate as well, um, this, is, this is certainly part of the conversation that Democrats are, are having right now. So moving forward, uh, he's still going to be pretty busy, as you point out. He's a senator, uh, which means there's lots of stuff happening. Uh, a vote on uh, the president's war powers and, of course, a potential impeachment trial coming up. What role do you see him playing sort of publicly for the Democratic Party, both as an outspoken senator, but also as we move into the campaign season? That's for Caitlin. Oh, 
Sorry, I'm sorry. Well, cer- certainly um, lots of candidates would want Cory Booker to come and campaign for them and endorse them. He is a very powerful force in the campaign trail. I remember being in Iowa um, around this time last year before Cory Booker had announced, talking to people there who um, had seen him come and campaign for other candidates who really uh, liked his energy, liked what he had to say. So you can certainly imagine him being a powerful uh, surrogate for whoever becomes the nominee. Um, and also, you know, he has to run for re-election, so that will be another um, thing that, that he will be uh, contending with in the media term. But I'd also like to point out, you know, we've been talking about the impact that impe- the impeachment trial will have on uh, some of these members of Congress who will have to balance these roles on the campaign trail and uh, their chief priority, which is is the Senate. You know, Cory Booker, uh, Amy Klobuchar, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders. There have been lots of questions about what this will do to the campaign. And so it was interesting to see in that memo, memo the Cory Booker campaign uh, said that it certainly was a factor, that the idea of being away from the campaign trail and not being able to have that interaction, not being able to use that to kind of raise money, um, could could be a distraction. So I'm interested to see if we hear more from from candidates as we get closer to Iowa, the impact that the impeachment trial is having. Right. Okay. Caitlin, Jack, thank you so much, guys.